Good morning, traders. Welcome to Thursday of this beautiful week. Got almost lost in what day it was this week. Uh, make sure to swing over to ssftg.com slash brief to grab your morning brief levels. Before we jump on in, as always, we need to check the news, see what's going on and when it's going on so that we're not taken by surprise by anything. Uh, so looking at the news calendar for this morning, Earlier, uh, we've got at 8.30, the building permits for December. That's forecasted at 1.604 million. Previous was 1.635. Going beyond that, we have some medium news announcements. Housing starts for December. Another large announcement with the initial jobless claims. That forecast is 910,000. The previous was 965,000. And the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index. Lots of stuff coming out at 8.30. Forecast for that, uh, for January, that is, for 12. And the previous is 9.1. That's about it. So, <laughs> he says, as there's uh, as there's a mountain of news in front of us. Uh, we do actually have quite a bit of news today. There's three large news announcements coming out. They're all coming out at 8.30. So, that does mean that it's going to be a little bit of an early in, early out kind of scenario. Aside from the fact that we had, you know, the presidential inauguration and stuff like that yesterday, there wasn't really any news the the whole week. There hasn't been much. It's been a holiday that started the week off. It's been slow. Today, we might actually have something to wake things up a little bit and hopefully uh, maybe get the volatility back up a bit more to see some uh, some swings rather than just staying pinned to the highs. But that should take care of the news and, and all that fun stuff. So now we can jump in for today. Today being one twenty one of 21. First up on the list, starting off with the NASDAQ. And we have finally completed a major objective to the upside. Uh, we have the fantastic measured move higher, which just hit. Uh, actually, earlier this morning, we're also on top of the channel highs. Everything is starting to hit up here uh, in terms of objectives. The big thing that stands out is we're not seeing any indications from the indicators <laughs> uh, that there's any divergences or any weakness or anything like that. So the only thing that we have to work with is simply the fact that we're coming off of structural resistance, which is an assumed resistance because this is only a three-point channel. The fourth point is what it's hitting right now. It lines up. Everything kind of makes sense up here, but it's selling the highs into all-time highs. It's a tough area. Uh, much more likely, buyers will continue to try to buy the pullbacks, even if they do fail to go up to a new high. It'll be a little bit easier on the probability side to be a buyer for now until we start seeing some more signs of failure. Uh, the initial area of interest is going to be a dip back down towards the 13,250s. That's just a big level of interest as it stands. And if it wants to go a little bit further and fall apart, then obviously there's that big 13,000 level, which has been acting as a pretty big level of support and resistance for quite a while. And if we look at the overall pullback momentum from the top to the bottom of that pullback move, and we pop that over here, that would put us a lot further down. Uh, if it went down there very quickly, we could be looking at about an L4 maybe, uh, floating around those 13,000s. If it takes a little bit longer though, uh, then you can see how if we drag that out and it takes a long time like it did over here, that might potentially line up almost perfectly with the channel lows. So the NASDAQ, definitely in the zone of interest, it's just a matter of seeing where it wants to continue, if it's going to pull back from the highs or if it's going to reverse off the highs. We're kind of on a teeter-totter, and the fact that we're at all time makes it a little bit complicated. On the S&P, we have kind of a similar situation. Uh, the S&P was looking a little bit stronger in terms of the overall structure, but NASDAQ, I think, kind of swept in and took that back. Uh, the overall measured movement to the upside, we haven't hit yet on the S&P. That would have a move up towards the 3,900s, but we're... We're only at 38.50, so we've got another 50 points to go before it's even close to that. It's definitely possible to hit that today uh, if it wants to keep really rallying like we saw yesterday. But when you have a back-to-back -back day that's super strong like that, it, that's tough. That takes a lot of capital to keep things going. And you can see, like here, you have a very strong bull day, and then it goes sideways for a bit. Very strong bull day probably go a bit more sideways it doesn't mean that the sideways can't have a bullish angle to it just more likely on the buy low side of things rather than trying to buy way up here hoping for continuation if the buyers do take it further up then we've got the top of the wedge uh, top of the channel rather which is floating up at the 3900s and that's the major objective that hasn't been hit uh, on the s&p when compared to the nasdaq 
over on gold with a, jeez, an absolutely massive reversal. That 1831 area, this thing is no joke. Every time it comes into this area, it just bounces really aggressively. And it, it tried to get through it. <laughs> and as soon as that failed, guess what? We're back off to the races again. So it would be nice, assuming that there are, are a lot of sellers who are probably stuck on this, would be nice to see a quick little flashback uh, for buyers to pump this back higher. Major objective is going to be back into the opposing bear L4 uh, right around the 1900s. It's a big psychological level, lines up pretty nicely, and that would be a pretty good move as far as a breakout that would be equidistant over the top and bottom. So if you go from range lows to the highs, and then you take that and deviate it up, you've got roughly around the same area, give or take a bit. Uh, that's more into the 1930s. So there are definitely some zones of resistance more on the upper edge. But either way, buyers still have some room to grow and sellers are still just kind of waiting. It's a tough spot for the sellers. On crude oil, we have a wedge attempted breakout. That was yesterday and that failed. It couldn't make it above the highs. It had a three press top fail back inside of it. Even, uh, even held it really nicely with an inside resistance retest. Perfect. So everything lined up very, very nicely in terms of the, the wedge high in, in structural uh, confirmation. It's definitely there. As far as the buyers go, buyers obviously don't want to buy high. If they, want to, if they wanted to buy high, it would have gone through the highs. It didn't. So the fact that it failed, I think it's fairly obvious. Nobody wants to buy that far up. So they're going to be looking to buy cheaper. And that makes a lot of sense because this 52 to 54 area, well, actually, I believe we were talking 51 to 53. But either way, this zone is a big area of resistance that we've been hovering in and having a really hard time breaking higher. If sellers are going to take over, this is a great spot to try. Doesn't mean they will. Bulls are still very, very strong to the upside. And buyers will be looking to pick up support below the bottom at 5180s, potentially down into the, you know, the lower 51s maybe even down to the 50s, depending on how much of a, how much of a move it gets. Probably not today. Uh, <laughs> it's probably a couple days away. But either way, buyers looking for a pullback, that would make a lot of sense for them to ping the market back up, buy below the lows, accumulate some of those stops, and then bounce right back up and finish the job and actually get the new high. Switching gears to the euro on the currency side of things, and we're holding lower highs, lower lows. Major objective has been hit at the bottom of the channel, and this is kind of a, a funky channel because this didn't start out this wide. Uh, obviously, it started off with the lows, which you can see pretty clearly. So you've got the A to B point that projected out C, uh, and it, initially it would have been a little bit further up. Right. For me, I would have I, I would have had it anchored here. That didn't really test anything. Had it anchored here, didn't really test anything. Been trying and trying and trying to figure out where this top of the channel is. Uh, so we just parked it on the highs and we're sort of waiting. Along the way, though, this midline starts showing up. And it's hard to really discern the midline until the line is in the right spot because uh, these won't line up otherwise. Uh, but if we look at this overall movement, we have fantastic support. Support and resistance. Resistance, very obvious resistance. Uh, very obvious resistance. Mediocre resistance, good resistance, support, support, support. You can kind of see there's something very obviously going on here. Uh, so the line, it's drawn right. And that means that the channel highs are probably a little bit further up if the market wants to go for maybe a secondary leg. So if it is going to go for a secondary leg, that would allow buyers to try to crank back up towards the top of an L2 zone of resistance up towards the 1.22 and top of the channel. And that's where sellers are going to be looking to push the market back down again and attempt to get this to continue its cycle back lower. It's, it's been holding nicely so far. This would be the first test of the wider channel to see if they want to regain the trend back down. And then finally over on Bitcoin with a wedge still. <laughs> There's not really not really much of a change on that front. That said, uh, we do have some fairly obvious L5 dipping. This is the same thing that's been happening since this wedge began. Uh, we started off on the highs with a deep L5 dip. Rotated all the way lower, deep L4. This was an L4, not a 5. Went higher. If we measure this overall move, that one went back to an L4, almost L5. Now we're starting to rotate back down again. And noticing where these pullbacks are going, we're diving down to the low to high, 
right around that L4 to L5 area. So it's no surprise that buyers are buying here because this is the area where they can buy in with a very small risk, right? The risk would be below the lows of the assumption that it's holding, but the targets are way back up to the highs. So the reward versus risk is fantastic. It's like a two and a half, maybe three to one in this zone. Uh, the buyers will be jumping in. This is Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin loves doing those funky slides to mess people's stops up. Uh, there's a lot of margin trading that goes on when it comes to Bitcoin, leveraged trading outside of the US. Uh, and all of that typically causes some pretty big volatility when the market gets jumping. So we're finding the support off of this low, but don't necessarily be surprised if all of a sudden this giant wick shows up back to 30,000, because that can definitely, definitely happen, especially on Bitcoin. All righty, well, that's going to do it for today. Like we always say, stay safe out there, keep those stops in play, and let the winners run. Until the next time, enjoy, rest up, and we will see you all then. Thanks.